What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about Squad's newest faction in the WPMC, but more importantly, how strong they actually are in the game. So hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and drop a comment down below. Let me know how strong you think this faction actually is. So since the WPMC release, I've had several rounds to play it, and it is a very fun and pretty energetic type of faction. My early thought is that there's a decent balance between what you can and cannot do with this faction. But I realized that there were also concerns that they could turn into something like Turkey that feels very underpowered against a lot of other factions, especially when better armor is incorporated. But since the release, I've been pleasantly surprised with the fact that they seem pretty strong. And it doesn't really matter who they go up against, they seem formidable against any type of unit. So I went to MySquadStats.com to check out and see what this faction was actually up to in terms of its win to loss ratio across the participating servers. Now this is from a span of September 25th to October 9th. And these are arranged based on win to loss ratio. And obviously being a brand new faction, these are gonna get played a lot because servers will sort of prioritize that. But look at the amount of total matches with this faction and that win to loss ratio. It has the highest win ratio out of all the factions with significantly more matches played. And that win to loss ratio is actually much higher than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be lower because there's certainly games where you have to kind of figure out how the faction works, but I guess this is just a little bit surprising to me. As is the Australian Defense Force being last on this list with their win to loss ratio. Man, what happened there? So what's contributing to that success? And let's recap some of their strengths and weaknesses. First of all, the WPMCs have a ton of speed, especially within their vehicles, allowing them to get infantry pretty spread out. And with that, they also have a bunch of adaptability in terms of their kits. This also includes having very strong anti-tank kits. They're currently the only faction with a mobile spawn vehicle, and they're incredibly strong when you play them aggressively. Now, as for weaknesses, they lack in having an IFE or infantry fighting vehicle available, and they really just don't have a mechanized presence. Meanwhile, many of their other vehicles feel very disposable. They're just not very strong and are subject to just getting destroyed repetitively. While the mobile spawn vehicle is a perk to the faction, it is very expensive and can be a detriment because it's very hard to recover, especially if it gets tracked. Finally, they seem weaker defensively. They rely very heavily on that speed to get out in front, to be aggressive and maneuver around enemy teams. Whereas on the defensive, they can have a hard time, especially if they start to get bottled up or surrounded. Now, some of you may be surprised that I left off the close air support helicopter, but I just haven't seen it play a major role in any given round. Plus there's some issues with it getting shot down pretty easily. So we're gonna hold judgment on that for now. I do like the fact that this faction's strengths and weaknesses are very closely tied together. The strengths, for example, having a mobile spawn vehicle is quickly countered by the fact that the mobile spawn vehicle actually is kind of problematic in many scenarios. It's very loud, it can be very susceptible to getting attacked, and it can be difficult to recover. You could dig down a radio, you can't just dig down a mobile spawn vehicle to save those 20 tickets. Not to mention the vehicle itself is both a radio and a hab, so it can be proxy disabled and then picked apart by enemy armor, especially if you don't have the right assets around it. So you just have to be mindful of that when positioning it. You may have a lot of speed with your vehicles, but you lack in armor, which makes those vehicles pretty disposable and tends to lead to situations where you lose a ton of tickets on your team because people are just driving vehicles right at enemy IFVs or into enemy fire generally. You have strong infantry AT, but you lack in an IFV. So it really does have some things that play against each other, and I think that is probably the makings of a good faction. So where does this faction best thrive in terms of strategy? Well, first of all, I think they're really great on that aggressive front. If they can push very quickly into objectives and make it really difficult, especially for enemy armor, to push into specific areas. In fact, recently I played around on Mudaha, where all the objectives were along the center lane running north to south. We were coming out of the northern spawn and basically I sent my crew to the east side to attack enemy armor that was coming up from the south. So our goal was to stay on the eastern side, but attack the main MSR because we were facing the Russian mechanized group. So we leaned pretty heavily into AT and worked on this sort of flanking position to attack the southern side of the city. And ultimately, because we knew where the caps were headed and we knew that we could harass the enemy armor trying to get into the city, we made it hell for that team. This is likely where the WPMC faction will thrive creating opportunities for flanks, working around the enemy, trying to surround the enemy, and just applying a ton of pressure, especially on foot with infantry. However, I have seen some instances of the WPMC falling short. Because they rely so heavily on sort of going around the enemy and not getting into like a face-to-face -face fight with something like a bunch of IFEs, it can actually spread out your infantry too much. Now, in all fairness, I've seen the WPMC factions actually recover very quickly. When they have fallen or maybe are losing some ground, they are able to sort of make it up or make it more of a contested thing than you'd expect. 
especially when using the MSV. But if you're not doing these things and you spread out your infantry too much, and let's say they begin respawning on your defense objective, and suddenly you're sort of siloed into playing your defensive objective and slowly getting surrounded, this is where they are going to mightily struggle because they don't have that IFE or a couple vehicles that they can send up to help slow that down. There's sort of a breaking point that I think can happen with the WPMCs if they get too focused on one position on the map without trying to poke and prod elsewhere. Now, you can make an argument that that's true for any faction, right? That if they get surrounded, they're going to be in trouble. But I think the problem with the WPMC is they just don't have anything to kind of push over the edge to sort of rebound from that. And then often goes back to that conversation around a lack of mechanized presence. So therefore, to really recover or to position yourself in a way to compete against an area where you're losing, you have to rely very heavily on that infantry presence and getting those guys out there, which kind of leaves you susceptible in terms of just transportation. This is where I've seen the WPMCs typically lose, as they are throwing vehicles at something that the vehicles can't handle on a repetitive basis and ending up in a situation where they have a lot of tickets lost to that, and then they're just not gaining objectives or able to gain objectives because they've lost map control. This can just create sort of a bleed in tickets for the WPMCs. It's also a situation where it'd be difficult for them to reclaim territory and maybe an objective to help sort of offset the ticket loss. Just in my opinion, they thrive on maps where they can play the width of the map versus playing in a narrow corridor. And I've seen them struggle on maps like Korra, where they may win the infantry one-on-ones, but they're going to have a tough time gaining position because they can't move as freely as some other larger maps. They are narrowed down into lanes that can easily be held by enemies. So while people are trying to learn how to play the faction, obviously they're also learning how to play against the faction. Hence why I bring up sort of the strategy around maybe where WPMCs are really going to benefit the most versus where they may struggle. And because it's a new faction, we're obviously diving in and learning this on the job. So the stats that we see in my squad stats are largely gonna reflect that learning curve. So then I started to wonder what maps were being played. I think there are certainly maps that are gonna benefit the WPMCs more than others. Like, I would assume that maps that have urban areas, something like Mudaha, are going to be largely beneficial for this faction. I would also think that maybe Talil or Kohat may not be the ideal map for the WPMCs. This is just because armor can dominate those large open areas and really cut down on the ability for the WPMC to maneuver. So going back to my squad stats, we have the 10 most played maps in the same time frame that I mentioned earlier. You can see that Mudaha is played the most, followed closely by Fallujah, Goro, and Yeho. I mean, largely on this list, I think most of these maps fit perfectly into what the WPMCs are gonna be great at. Some of them have urban areas, some of them have just enough space and flexibility for the WPMCs to maneuver. And I would imagine that some of the maps selected, especially on servers that have map voting, is sort of a reflection of the fact that folks are gonna vote for maps knowing that the WPMCs are gonna be played more because servers are gonna push that given the update and so you're going to pick maps that suit the faction now if you're curious about the unit type that wins the most out of the wpmcs it is the combined arms manticore security task force the wpmc light infantry overwatch six patrol groups a little bit further down along with the wpmc air assault merc water air wing so while the wpmc combined arms has about double the amount of matches played it still holds a 1.58 win to loss ratio that's just a little bit over 60 percent winning percentage now, obviously, this can change over time. We've had a free weekend. We've had the learning curve of this new faction and learning how to play against it. But I think that's an encouraging start for a faction that is a little bit different in terms of its makeup, considering that it leans so heavily into infantry and light vehicles versus some other unit types that are going to lean very heavily into infantry fighting vehicles, APCs, and so on. I think OWI did a very good job of creating the WPMCs and giving them a feel that differs from pretty much every other faction. Like they have a ton of utility similar to the IMF, but they seem a little bit more refined and polished for obvious reasons. But of course, they don't have all the same vehicle capabilities. And obviously, they're going to remind you of Western or Blue Four factions. They are aligned that way. But the interesting thing is they don't particularly feel like those either. So it's exciting to see a rather unique faction being implemented into the game that has a pretty strong track record thus far. I'm excited to see over the next several months or year how this faction continues to play out in games. Does it continue to hold a pretty high presence in terms of the win to loss ratio or does it tend to balance out along with other factions? Now with everything that we've covered, I do think it's still a little bit too early to say whether they are truly overpowered, but I do think they are pretty strong. And I say that because no matter what faction or unit type is opposing them, they still have to sort of keep in mind what they're playing against. There are advantages to playing the WPMC that I think are going to keep them in the mix against any type of unit that the opposing team might operate with. 
and the fact that they seem pretty viable across many of the maps that are currently available in squad, I think that makes them a faction that's going to be a contender to be one of the stronger factions in the game. I hope you enjoyed this sort of conversation. If you did, let me know down below. And of course, give me your opinion on the WPMC faction. Are they pretty strong? Are they weak? Or do you feel like they're balanced amongst other factions? And as always, be sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and I will see you all next time.